So we are going to look at higher order partial derivatives and an intuitive explanation for Clairaut's theorem. To start out, let's take a look at what those higher order partial derivatives look like in the case of f of xy equals x squared sine of y. We already know that if we want to take the partial derivative, for example, with respect to x, we write f sub x of x comma y, and that's going to equal, we pretend that y is a constant and we differentiate with respect to x. So in this case, we get 2x times the sine of y. And we know that we can interpret this graphically just like we would an ordinary derivative, where we slice the graph in a particular section, where in this case it's going to look like a parabola, and we take a look at the slope of the tangent line. Now the first type of higher order partial derivative is one where we do f sub x, and then we take the partial derivative again with respect to x, which we can also just write as f with two x's on the bottom. That just means we take this, take the derivative with respect to x one more time. So in this case, we get two times the sine of y. In this case, we can do the same thing where we take our two-dimensional case and bring it back to one dimensions because we're still only looking at x. So in this case, the second partial derivative with respect to x is just the concavity of our function in the x direction. Again, that's just like with single variable calculus. Now, where things are going to get a little more interesting is when we take a look at mixed partial derivatives. So let's say we take our f sub x here and look at what happens if we take f sub x and then do the partial derivative with respect to y, which we also write as f sub x y. Well, we know that that means we're going to take this function here, treat x as a constant, and differentiate with respect to y, which will give us 2x times the cosine of y. But what this means is a little more difficult to understand because we can't just reduce it to one dimension. So we have to think about what the definition of a derivative is. In this case, what we're saying is the slope of the function as we go in the x direction is going to change based on the value of y. For example, if y changes, in this case, the value of sine of y is going to change. Let's say it goes down. Then our new function in the x direction would look like this, for example. If that sine value decreased, we get a flatter parabola. And then if we take the partial derivative at a particular x value, well, the slope of our tangent line is not going to be as steep. So we can see that a change in y has changed the slope in the x direction. And that is what we're looking at when we take this mixed partial derivative. Now one question you might ask is what would be the difference between f sub x y and f sub y x? Let's figure it out. If we start from our function f of x y equals x squared sine of y, f sub y, that's going to be the derivative with respect to y of what we have here. That'll be x squared cosine y. And then if we do f y and then take the partial derivative with respect to x, we're going to treat y as a constant and differentiate with respect to x to get 2x cosine of y. So in this case, we can see that our f sub x y is equal to our f sub y x, because notice both of them equal 2x times the cosine of y. It turns out that this is almost always the case. It is true in any situation where the mixed partial derivatives, f sub x y and f sub y x, are both continuous around a particular point. And that's called Clairaut's theorem. And what we want to figure out is why this is always true. Because this is a very powerful fact, but we want to understand where exactly it comes from. And in order to do that, we're going to hop into MATLAB. So now we're in MATLAB taking a look at a different function, in this case f of xy equals xy. And I chose this function because it's one of the clearest examples of what we're going to go over. Now what we see here is the graph of the function between 0 and 2 in the x and y directions. And what we want to focus on are these blue and red lines. Because remember, when we look at mixed partial derivatives, for example, if we look at f sub xy, what we're saying is we change the value of y, this axis here, and we ask how does that affect the slope of x. In this case, we can see that that mixed derivative has to be positive, because when y is 0 down here, the slope in the x direction is flat, so it's a slope of 0. 
But once y has increased to 2, we see a positive slope in the x direction, which means that mixed derivative is positive. The reason that happens is because we see that the top point up here, where y equals 2, is much higher than the top point over here where y equals 0, whereas the starting point on this side is the same. And because of that, there's a higher slope when y equals 2, so that mixed derivative is positive since the slope has increased as we move in the y direction. Now what we want to ask is how does that fact affect f sub y x, the derivative in the other direction? Well first, let's take a look at what that is in this circumstance. We can see that when x is equal to 0, the slope in the y direction is this blue line over here, and we can see that that is flat. But once x increases to 2, just like before, our slope in the y direction is positive. It's going up. And it's going up just as much as the slope in the x direction was going up. We can see that there's a symmetry here. So what we want to understand is why does the mixed derivative in one direction determine the mixed derivative in the other direction? Now, in order to understand why that is, what we want to look at is what happens when we make this second slope, the red slope, bigger than the first red slope. In order to make that second red slope bigger than the first red slope, we have to make this point up here higher. But as we make this point up here higher, it's also going to be higher for the blue slope that ends in the same place, that second blue slope. And so as we increase the mixed derivative in the xy direction, the derivative in the yx direction is going to increase by exactly the same amount, because we're increasing the slope in the same way. And what we can see is that happens with all of the four points here that determine the two partial derivatives. When we look at, for example, this point down here, if we decrease the value of this point, that's going to make this red slope get bigger. So it's going to decrease our mixed partial derivative. But at the same time, as this point decreases, our blue slope is also going to get bigger. It's going to get closer to this second blue slope over here. And so the opposite mixed partial derivative is going to change by the same amount. So every single point we're looking at here, there is a symmetry in the way that changing that point's value affects each of the partial derivatives. You can't change one without changing the other. Now this situation that we're looking at here isn't exactly what a derivative is, because remember that we're looking at a slice from 0 to 2 in the x direction and 0 to 2 in the y direction. Derivatives are looking at infinitesimal changes, really, really, really small changes. But everything that we talked about here is exactly how the derivative operates algebraically. All we do to take the actual derivative is make this square that we're looking at much, much smaller. We're just looking at this little part down here. And as long as there's a little bit of curving of our function, we're still going to see that positive mixed derivative because of the way that this slope is different from this slope in the blue and the red direction. Now there's also an algebraic perspective on that visual explanation that we just went through. So that's what I'm going to explain here. We can see a 2D diagram of that 3D plot that we were looking at in MATLAB. You can imagine the function coming out of the screen here, and we're just looking at those lines that we were seeing earlier that describe the slope, for example, in the x direction at y equals 0 versus at some greater value of y. And at that higher value, the slope was steeper. The same thing happens to the slopes in the y direction. What we're interested in with respect to mixed derivatives is what is the change in slope as we increase, for example, x or y. So to start out, if we want the change in the slope in the x direction, this red slope here, well, we have to find each slope, and then we have to take the difference between those. So without worrying about the length of the interval, which we would divide out, that slope is going to come from the difference in values of the function at the end of our line here and at the beginning. So we take the function's value f at this ending point minus f at the beginning point. And then we subtract off our original slope, which is again f at the ending point, in this case right here, and then f 
at the beginning point, which is in the bottom left corner. We can do the same thing to look at the change in the slope in the y direction, these blue lines here. We start by taking this top value at the end of this blue slope and subtracting the value at the beginning of the line. Then we take the difference with our other slope over here, this point minus that point. What we want to look at algebraically is to realize that these two things are actually the same. The change in f sub x is equal to the change in f sub y on a particular rectangle. And we can see that by realizing that all the terms in this top expression also show up in the bottom expression. This f of x plus dx, y plus d dy, that shows up right here. Minus f of x comma y plus dy is here in the top expression, and that shows up down here in the bottom expression. Minus f of x, y plus dy. The same thing applies up here. We have a minus f of x plus dx comma y. That shows up right here. Minus f of x plus dx comma y. And then we have a minus, minus becomes a plus f of x, y, just like we have on the bottom. The only difference between these two expressions is that these two points have been switched. But when we switch these two terms, it doesn't matter because we're subtracting both of them in each case. So there's not going to be a difference between the changes in slopes. Basically, what we're saying is these two points stay the same in each of those expressions. And when we swap the two points along this diagonal here, well, they're both at the bottoms of the slopes anyway, so they're just going to get subtracted regardless. And therefore, the changes in slopes in the x direction versus the y direction are equivalent. That's just an algebraic way to think about what we were looking at visually. So that's an intuitive explanation for Clairaut's theorem. It comes from the fact that when we look at a particular set of points, x to x plus dx and y to y plus dy, the slopes here are very closely intertwined. Any effort that we make to change the value of one of these points at the end of a slope is going to affect both slopes in the exact same way, and therefore those mixed partial derivatives are always going to be equal.